Hi guys, Karloski here. Today I'd like to show you how to create a TCP server and client in Visual Basic. Start up by opening up Visual Studio. Create new project. Name this server. For the purposes of this example, we're just going to make it in a console application because it's much easier and quick in the, for this. Click OK. Just middle click the icon on the taskbar. Create a new project, also console application, we call this client. Okay. We can go back to the server. We can start with our imports. Imports and system.net. Imports system.net.sockets. Okay, and then imports system.txt. I just like to rename this for purposes. Main module. Okay, yes, cool. Then we can start with our vari variables or variable server stcp listener. Underscore is there just to indicate that it's a global variable so you can easily recognize when it's global or not. I'm going to try and catch the air. Dot right line x console dot read line. Okay. Now for the purposes of this we're just gonna say or well, we're gonna hard code the IP and the port the IPS string equals two. Now I already know my I, my IP, but now if you don't know how to get your IP, just say Windows key R. We open up the run, write in CMD, press enter, type in IP config. Okay, and if you scroll up, it'll either be under Ethernet or wireless. Mine's on Ethernet, and there you'll see my IP. Okay. Um, port as integer and we'll just give it 56 56 for for now whichever you you can choose whichever okay and now we're going to start the server so server equals to new tcp listener ip address now because it requires this we need to parse the ip to make it make sure it's valid Okay, cool, and then server.start. That's it. Now our server is running. But now our server is going to be useless running on its own without any clients connecting to it. So we're going to make another thread where clients can connect and obviously wouldn't uh, hog this main GUI, if you could say it that way. So threading dot thread pull dot user work item address of new client okay and we just say generate method put a try catch copy the console okay okay now and now we're going to be using usings <laughs> so that the objects get disposed on their own okay so using client as tcp client equals to the server dot accept tcp client since we're going to be using network streams we're also going to be using a using and the network stream is for the communication between the client and the server so using ns as network stream equals to client dot get stream okay before we carry on, we just want to copy this part of the code that creates a new thread so that every time a client successfully connects, it creates a new thread so that a new client can connect. Okay. Now we're going to add a while so that you'll see in a bit why. So while, just while true. That's, that's an endless loop. Okay, so while true. Now we're going to create a buffer so that we can receive the 
message from the client. So dim to receive. We give it a size of 100,000. It can be whatever you want, but the more the better, or the more the better in the sense that you can lose less of the message. But anyway, I'll explain that now. As byte, equal to um, length as integer equals to ns.read, equal to receive, I start at the index of zero, and the size of it to receive dot length. Okay, so what I've done here, oh, actually, let me just do the next piece of code and then I'll explain. A string equals to encoding hash key dot get string to receive start at index of zero and then len. Okay, so what happens here? We create the buffer of 100,000 bytes. Whatever the client sends, if it's more or equals or less than 100 bytes, regardless, right, it'll be put into this to receive array, right, and we supply it the length so that we can populate the whole thing. Okay, so it'll populate that. Now this to read returns an integer of length, so it'll only re it'll return the amount of bytes that are actually populated. So let's say the client only sends 20 bytes worth of stuff, but we have 100. We catering for 100,000 bytes. We only want the 20 bytes. We don't want the extra. So that's what this will return. So it'll return only the ones that we want, as in the bytes that we that aren't empty, if I can put it that way. Yeah, it's harder to explain uh, than I thought. And then we'll just use it here. So if you put this as the length over here, what will happen is you will receive the text from the client, and the text afterward afterwards will just be empty spaces so that's why we put this so they only get the text and no spaces afterwards unless there is an, an actual space in the text after the text that gets sent but anyway so you can just test out with replacing those two but you'll see that this one returns more than this one this one will return what you want okay and then dim uh, console dot right line just the text now we just want to send back to the client that we re received the message. So we can create another buffer to send. But this one we don't have to give it a size because it's dynamic or will be dynamic. We've got an equals there. Get bytes. Okay, and we're just going to say message received. Okay. Cool. Now we're going to write to the client. So ns.write. Okay, to send. I'm going to start from the beginning. So we want all of it. And then to send.length. That's pretty much it for the server. Okay, so I think we got everything over here. Just one final check that we read right on the console so we can see what we get and then we send a response back. Okay, that's in the while loop. Perfect. Now we can move to the client. Just rename this. Okay. We can copy the imports on this side as we'll be using the same ones. Ah, there we go. Cool. Create the global variable. The client as TCP client. Try catch console dot right line. read cool and here we're also going to hard code the IP and the port the IP as string equals to 
them port as integer. Now these are the IP, well this is the IP of the server that you want to connect to and that's also it's the, the server's port that you want to connect to. Okay, then client equals to new TCP client IP and port. Now unlike here, we don't have to parse this because what this requires is a host name as a string. So that's good enough. But you, you're still going to want to parse this on your own time and blah blah blah. Now that part of that one line of code is the same as doing this. Equals to new TCP client and then client.connect IP and port. Okay. Just put the brackets there always. Okay, so these two lines of code are the same as that one. But yeah, you can choose which one you prefer. Okay, so once that's done, we're also going to create a using here for a network stream again. NS as net network stream equals to client dot get stream. Then a endless loop. So while true. Okay. Now we're going to uh, create the text to send. So we create the buffer again to send as byte equals to encoding dot ashy dot get bytes and now we're gonna have console dot read line okay ns dot write to send start at the index of zero to send dot length okay now once that done now since we know that the server sends a response, we also want to read that response that we received from the server. So we're going to create another buffer, dim to receive. And here we give it a size, also 100,000 as byte, dim length, as you can see this pops up again, equals to ns.read to receive index of zero to receive dot length okay and then dim text as string equals to encoding dot ashley dot get string to receive zero index length okay once that's done, we're going to display it. Console dot right line text. I'll just create an extra so that there's a spacing involved. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Just go to the just add an extra space that looks better. But that's pretty much it for the client and the server. Let me just double check. IP, connect, get the stream, write, send that, cool. So what will happen now is we'll run this, create, it'll start the server on that IP and that port, create a new thread, then it'll pause on this line of code, this specifically. As soon as the client con connects to the server and is successful, it'll carry on. It creates a new thread here and then it'll also be waiting over here while this carries on and we'll get the stream from the client, we create the buffer, then it will pause on over here waiting for the client to send something. Once the client sends something, do there, we convert it, display it to so that we can read it or convert it, yeah, and then we send a response back to the client saying that we received the message from the client. Client.read, blah blah blah, no, dot write. Okay, and then here we connect to the server, get the stream, we send this and since we know we're getting a response we get the response from the client and then that's it that seems about right so we're going to run the server first whilst the client will fail 
because now it's just automatically connecting immediately. And this is taking its time. Okay. And then we start the server. Okay, just move the I mean the client. Okay, and now if we just type in here, it should pop up on that side. So here we send hello and we get a message received. So now here we can just keep on spamming it and as you'll see we'll get stuff. Now obviously you want to see so if you want to see obviously we can connect with multiple clients so we'll just close this one quickly you'll see we'll get a, an exception because the connection gets lost over here because it's waiting over here once the connection or once you close the application the connection gets lost and it throws an exception on this line that's why we have this catering for it so that it doesn't close our program but if we go back to the client right click over not rename right click over there we get the actual exe run that a couple of times so we have like we're simulating multiple clients so here we will see this so client one one client two now if we press enter you can see there client one client two so now that's how you can see we are actually getting the messages from both clients which means it's creating a new thread each time that's why this is here so as soon as one client connects successfully it creates a new one and then obviously if we close them get the same exception but at least the, th the server doesn't crash as you can see because we can still keep on connecting more clients but that's it guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll make sure to put the, the copy of these applications on the solution so that you can download them or you can just create them from scratch and not even that big but thanks for watching guys and hope you liked the video and if you did please give it a like and enjoy bye